Hi, I'm Dr. Malescu and I will be instructing you in human biology, so BSc 1020 at Daytona State College, DeLand campus. Now, because of COVID-19, we are not on ground as much as we originally were scheduled for. So we used to offer this class every Tuesday and Thursday from 11 a.m. to 12.20 p.m. Well, now because of COVID-19, we are officially a hybrid course. So what does that mean for you this fall 2020? It means this, we will be meeting virtually every Wednesday, but on ground every Friday, okay? So every Friday, we will have minimal contact for only one hour because typically the risk goes up after being together for more than one hour. So we are following CDC guidelines. So therefore, you will meet with me in DeLand, okay? DeLand Campus, Building 6. Um, I put the, the exact room number in the announcement section. So every single Friday, from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., we will meet on ground. Now, what about the virtual portion? The virtual portion, we will meet every single Wednesday, and that will be the meat of the course because there I can take my time. I won't be so nervous about, oh my gosh, we're running out of time. We can't be here that long. Um, so Wednesday, we'll have a two-hour session in virtual classroom. So some of you have never experienced virtual classroom. Don't panic. It's really, really user-friendly, very intuitive. I even gave you a YouTube instructional on it in case you're not, you know, intuitively catching it. And that's fine. Um, I even put a, a screenshot of where to find it. So it's really just click and open and you're fine, okay? So where do you go for virtual classroom? When you log into Falcon Online, you will see the announcement section. You will see uh, dates to know, like deadlines and things like that. If you look at the top, there's a blue banner. Go to the banner section at the top. Somewhere in the middle, you'll see the section that says tools. So in the tools section, click on that and a drop down will begin to show up for you. As you scroll down, scroll down to what is said right there, virtual classroom. Click on virtual classroom. Once you click on virtual classroom, it'll get you inside virtual classroom. And all the previous videos that I had done, so all the sessions that I have done, I will record. So you will see the previous ones, plus the one that you are about to go into. So for example, we start school August 24th, that's on Monday. So the 26th is our first session. You will log in the first day, August 26th, right? On Wednesday, all right, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., okay? So once you log in, you go to the tool section, go to the Dropbox, okay, click on virtual, classroom and it will say that date so the date that i am lecturing it will be there and not only that it will have a title the title of the topic that we are discussing for that day why do i do that because this way prior to wednesday when class school begins monday you can look at the powerpoint and understand what we will be discussing okay so that's that Monday uh, and Tuesday, I want it all for prep time for you guys. Wednesday, we have our first lecture. Then you do your homework on Thursday. And Friday should be more about uh, just reviewing or finishing up whatever was not finished in my lecture series online in virtual classroom. Friday should be a one hour session that's quick in and out. We go over things, review things, make sure that you're on the same page with me, uh, understanding everything and perhaps finishing up a lecture. All right, so we will only be there for an hour. And during that hour, uh, I'll have the doors open so that outside air can come in. I will have the doors open so you don't touch the doorknob. I will expect all of you to be wearing a mask at all times. Um, don't laugh at me, but I will have a face shield and a mask. Um, I am in a higher risk group um, and that's why. Uh, what else? 
the guidelines. All right, so the student acknowledgement form must be signed before you even show up. So what you do is the week of next week, August 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, all those couple of days, read the student acknowledgement before you come in that Friday. Read the student acknowledgement and sign it and upload it. Okay, so how do you do that? It's easy. So let's say um, you take a, what you can do is you print it, okay, sign it, take a screenshot of it, okay, and then you upload it. Upload that screenshot in the section where it says welcome to biology. It'll be in the content section of your Falcon Online Human Biology. Once you get there, you upload, it'll, it'll show me that you have signed it and have read it and understood that what you need to do to keep everyone safe, yourself, me, and everyone around you. Okay, so let me read them to you. I'm looking at the screen now, so if you see me looking up and not at you um, on YouTube right now, I'm looking up so that I can tell you exactly what needs to be done. Okay, so when you read the student acknowledgement form, it's basically a requirement based on CDC recommendations. You will wear a mask or face covering upon entering any building at Daytona State College while in the classroom, the hallway, the restroom, okay? Travel to and from class on campus, outside, you still have to wear it. This includes outdoor settings where social distancing cannot be maintained. Masks or facial coverings can be simple homemade coverings and do not need to be medical grade. The CDC and the Surgeon General have released guidelines on making homemade face coverings. At this point, we have been in this pandemic since March. I'm sure you have a mask, but if you don't, I will have masks provided at my front desk. Okay, don't wear gloves. Don't, you're touching everything, okay? It's just, it's pointless. Just wash your hands frequently. Social distance, at least six feet. And if you need to come to me to my front desk, I will have a front uh, a screen. Um, stay six feet away, okay? I am. Um, I have parents that are in their 80s, and yes, I am visiting them. Um, once I start school, I will not. Um, and I have a mother-in-law who is very sick, so I cannot um, get anyone else in my family sick. So uh, I will be social distancing. All right, what else? Um, besides social distancing, it says here, um, you will not show up to class. You need to email me right away. If you have any cough, fever, or flu-like symptoms, don't go, don't go to class. Don't come and get us sick. <laughs> okay, so, um, and then go get tested. And then again, if you are positive, stay home for at least 10 days until the symptoms have dissipated. No fever for at least 72 hours, um, and then you can come back. <laughs> All right, so at least 10 days. So you know what, we're a hybrid. It's no big deal if you don't show up Friday. I'm not gonna get upset over it. You're not gonna get upset over it. You can get all your work done from home. It's just that we do need to have some contact um, on ground because it is a hybrid course. So there are certain things that need to be accomplished on ground. Okay, and you will self isolate for 14 days with no symptoms. That's what it is. So let me read this to you. If I have confirmed case of COVID-19, I will follow the CDC guidelines, immediately remove myself from class, notify my instructor, and only return to campus when, here it is, I produce two negative tests within 24 hours apart since the positive result, or at least 10 days have passed since my symptoms first appeared. And, I have had no fever, 100.4 or above, for at least 72 hours, and no fever without any kind of fever reducer medication like Tylenol, because you know we're all parents. We've been there with uh, taking the kids to daycare, <laughs> sick. Uh, no, you cannot have a fever, and of course, like I mentioned without medication, no fever. If you're just keep popping those Tylenols and you don't have fever, that doesn't count. Okay, now the other um, scenario, if I have, now this is different. 
This one is if you didn't test positive, but you came in contact with someone who tested positive. A close contact as defined by the CDC is someone who is less than six feet apart and you've been talking to them for at least 15 minutes uh, exposed without a mask, okay? That's a problem. So you need to produce a negative test or you'll just self-isolate for 14 days. Okay, so yada, 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 read, please read the student acknowledgement form before you come to class Friday. Sign it, upload it into Falcon Online. Now, let's go to course structure. What are we gonna do? That's what everyone wants to know, what we are going to do in human biology. Some of you may or may not go into science. Some of you are taking this just for fun, I doubt it. <laughs> Um, some need it for, uh, you know, as a requirement. So let's go over what we're going to do. Uh, we will have five quizzes, um, kind of like up until midway through the course, you'll have five quizzes just to get you started and used to taking tests and really keeping on top of things. Like all the topics that we're going over are quite challenging, so we'll keep quizzing you. By the time you get to quiz five, um, it'll be time to take at least exam one, perhaps even exam two by that point. You will have only three exams and they will stretch out between certain periods. So exam one will cover like a month worth of material, exam two and then exam three. The final exam is cumulative. So don't panic because if you take all your quizzes, all five quizzes, plus you took all three online exams, you will be more than ready. And I will have a review session online in virtual classroom. And on top of that, I have a bonus, bonus cumulative review questions. They are all essay and it's hard. It is like 45 questions and it's all essay. But when you do that, you're basically essentially ready for your cumulative final. Okay, so the cumulative final exam will occur after Thanksgiving, and guess what? We are not coming back on ground after Thanksgiving. Once Thanksgiving happens, we review online, you take the exam online, you're done. You don't have to show up anytime after Thanksgiving. Yay! Okay, and I got approval for that, so I'm really happy about that, so we don't have to meet again on ground after Thanksgiving. This gives you a lot of leeway, especially if you're traveling uh, to see family. You can stay where you are and take the exam. Okay, um, ba, 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 let's see. We, we will have a research paper that is a requirement. It's a research paper um, that uh, will be very specific on a disease that you wanna choose within the organ systems that we go over. More detail on that when we meet in virtual classroom. And then you have a bonus the bonus will include, um, if you wanted to do an extra bonus amount of points, um, I believe it's 10 points to do the PowerPoint on that paper. So the paper takes a long time to do. You need three references, it's scientific, all that. And then if you want extra points, bonus points, then you will do the PowerPoint as well. Okay, so basically the structure of the course is as follows. Each week we do a organ system or topic um, you will have a quiz pretty much each week going into October. Um, somewhere around the end of September, you'll have exam one, then exam two, then exam three. Exam three will occur right before Thanksgiving. Then we'll do uh, the review and you'll take your final exam after Thanksgiving. You will have as your assignments, uh, the biology research paper, the uh, PowerPoint on that research paper, and then um, the final cumulative review questions, which will be in the assignment section as well, uh, which will be a bonus. Um, you'll have a couple of other bonuses, like an essay on blood flow and cardiac impulse and nervous system uh, questions. Other than that, that's it. Five quizzes, three exams, and a final that's cumulative in all those assignments. Um, I, it'll be challenging, but... Um, It'll be digestible because I'll be teaching it. Uh, I'm not arrogant or anything, but I like to review things very well. And um, I will make sure no one's left behind. You will learn, um, you will acquire the knowledge and it'll be great because now you'll know your body way better. And perhaps some of you after taking this course, I've had this happen. They take the course, a lot of my young students, especially the dual enrollment, 
And guess what? They all want to go, I want to go into medicine. I want to be a PA. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a chiropractor. So you may really enjoy this course and say, hey, this is something that I want to go into. Um, maybe lab technology. Maybe you want to be a lab research uh, assistant or all the way, all the way, PhD in lab research and figure out the virus, COVID-19. Who knows? We see some future scientists after taking this class. All right, so that's about it. I don't think I want to say anything else other maybe, you know, here, here I am. I should, since I'm online, let's talk about who I am. I'll introduce myself and then um, for an extra couple of points, I'll put in the welcome section, um, you can do a bio. And your bio could be either a video like I just did, or if you want, you can just do like a little bio, type it out, upload it, and uh, we'll give you a few points there for that. So this way I get to know everyone, because I do, I want to know everybody. Everybody needs to be known so that I understand how you think, what you like, how you are, how is your learning technique. All right, so definitely do that. So when you do your bio, here's what you're going to do. You're gonna state your name, state your age, if you're dual enrollment, if you're in college, why are you taking this course, what is your, uh, what are your goals, what uh, do you want to study, what program do you wish to go in, i.e. nursing or whatever. Um, and then if you wanna go into detail, like how many pets you have, how many siblings, all that, you can do that, that's optional. But do not forget this. I really, 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 really can't emphasize enough. I want to know what kind of learner are you? Are you visual? Are you auditory? Are you kinesthetic, like hands-on? Because if you're hands-on, we need to do assignments that are hands-on, like writing things. Like, you know, if you need to memorize things, get index cards. All right. So uh, make sure you tell me about that. What are your strengths as a, academically? What are your strengths? Okay, some people are really good in science. Some people are really good in liberal arts. Some people really hate math. <laughs> Give me your strengths, your study style. How do you study? Maybe I can help you. Sometimes study technique is everything because I have students that are phenomenal. They know their material, then they take a test and they fail it. Why? Because A, maybe they have test anxiety. Maybe just they're just not good test takers. We need to strategize. We need to figure that out. So make sure you put that into your bio. Okay, no one else is reading it but me. You could take your time with it and go all out and tell me all about you, okay? All right, now let me tell you about me. So, um, who am I? Uh, my name is Dacha Malescu. So Dacha is a Romanian name. My parents are Romanian immigrants. They escaped communism in uh, 1968 and then it became a free country in 1989. Few, I think it was a, f a year or two after the Berlin Wall came down. Maybe it was a year, I don't remember. Check your history. That's a topic. All right, so that's why, hence the foreign name. But I am born in New York City. Uh, you may detect my accent here and there, especially if I say coffee and coffee talk. All right, sometimes I speak fast, but I will go slow because I know I'm a teacher, so I need to make sure everyone hears me clearly and uh, speaking slow enough that you can process the massive amounts of information that you'll learn about biology. So that's my ethnicity. Uh, I'm not your vanilla white. I'm, I guess I'm a little bit weird. I'm Eastern European. And uh, to make things even more fun, my ancestors truly are from uh, Transylvania. So every single one of them, my mom and my dad are from this place, uh, the mountainous region of Transylvania. And the town is named Cluj. You could look that up if you want to Google that. Uh, C-L-U-J. And apparently it's a technological hub right now in the city of, of in that city area in Romania. So things that I learned as I look up my ancestry. But I'm a proud American, born and raised in New York City, and transplanted to Florida in 2003, post 9-11. Um, why did I move? Um, because 9-11 um, really did a number on my podiatric practice. I was a podiatrist, foot and ankle surgeon, board certified, um, went to Hofstra University up north in New York, got my biology degree, hence I teach biology, um, minor in chemistry and psychology. And then I went off to podiatric medical school for four years, did a three-year surgical residency in the foot and ankle, 
Um, then it took me another five years to get board certified. So I already got out of residency, got married, had three kids, blah, blah, blah. And by the time I finished all of that, I was 34 years old. So if you're wondering why doctors charge so much, <laughs> I owed a lot of money after, after all those years of school. So 34 years old, I was board certified as a foot and ankle surgery, uh, specialist and I practiced for many years till 2012. What got me out was my back injury and my hips. I grew up as a gymnast. I was a division one athlete. I got a scholarship at Hofstra University for gymnastics, but I ruined my body. So if anyone's into athletics, you'll, you'll know, you'll feel it in your forties and your fifties. So by the time I got to about 2008, I, to add insult to injury, I also had a car accident. So I got rear-ended and that really ruined my back and hips. And so I ended up with, um, let's see, bulging discs C2 to C5. You'll learn all about that when we do uh, human biology. And a lumbar um, disc bulges L2 to L5 with disc herniation L1. And I needed hip replacements. So here I am at 50 with hip replacements. And luckily, knock on wood, I avoided back surgery, but that's all because my side gig and side hustle and my passion, what I love, is that I teach Pilates and yoga and I own a wellness center. Now, I am a full-time professor at Daytona State College. I just got hired as um, assistant professor and I'm proud to represent and I'm very happy to assist you in all your needs uh, in, throughout this course. That's pretty much it. I have three kids, had two dogs. I had to put one down this summer. It was terrible. I have, I had a Husky and I have a miniature rat terrier. They call it a mini rat terrier. And I have a bird and a cat. So I'm a little bit crazy with animals. Hence, I studied biology. Initially, that's what I thought I was gonna be doing. But I fell in love with wanting to be a doctor. <laughs> All right, that is it. I created a video that's way too long. I wanted to just introduce myself, but it turned out that it is 22 minutes long. So your video could be literally five minutes, or if you wanna just type it out and upload it, that'll be fine with that. All right, good luck, stay strong, stay organized, keep in touch, and always communicate with me. Whatever troubles you have, I am here for you. I'm your guide by your side. You will succeed as long as you stay focused and organized and keep in contact with me. All right, bye, take care.